Hey, welcome to Geeky Faucets. I'm Amy Dale. And I'm Christine Lucas-Avage. And this is episode 45. And today we're going to lump to... We're kind of continuing our series, Big big Names, Small Beginnings. And one of them sort of qualifies for that. But the other one we realized didn't... Not so much after we really started. really small beginnings. Yeah. So, um, but we're going to just lump them together. Because um, we have some other exciting stuff to talk about next week. So, um, our first... Contestant <laughs> is, is also our favorite, Nathan Fillion. Yes, yeah, we like him a lot, and um, I didn't know he was Canadian. I knew he was Canadian. Oh, well, you probably did. Of course, you did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he's Canadian, and both his parents were teachers, mm-hmm. English teachers. Yeah, and what's really cool, what I like about Nathan Fillion the most, like I think. From what I've read, I clearly, you know, don't know the guy, but he seems like he had a pretty cool, like, family life, and he's really into reading, and I wonder if this had something to do with his acting and stuff, because he's, he has said that one of the things that he loves is that his mom taught him how to, what he calls, cold read, which is when you get a book, you open it, and you can read it right away with feeling, which is so cool, and then he said, in this, in this same article that I read, he's like, I always feel sorry for kids whose, you know, moms, if this is totally paraphrasing and probably not exactly right, but basically, that, you know, um, moms who read monotone, their mothers didn't, you know, did them a disservice because, you know, they're reading in monotone. And I'm one of those moms. Do you read in monotone? I read in, well, mostly monotone. Sometimes I'll get a little inflection in there, but I just am, oh, I don't really word. like, I've never really liked reading aloud. I love it. So here, actually, this is a funny, embarrassing story that happened just the other night. <laughs> John was on the phone with his mom on speaker, and he's laying in bed talking with her, helping her with something on a computer or something. And I picked up a book and started reading, and all of a sudden, I looked at John because he was looking at me, and I realized that I was doing voices and reading out loud. Are you serious? <laughs> he was like, I was like, I'm reading out loud, aren't I? And he's like, uh-huh. How do you not know you're... Because I get... Okay, when I read out loud, here's I'm what crazy. I hate. No, here's what I hate when I... I yawn. I will read out loud and I just yawn all the time. Maybe that's a mental, like, I don't know, biological issue, but every, I'm like reading the kids and I'm reading Harry Potter and I'm totally into the book and I'm like, wow, no, I love to read and I read really passionately, but the problem is that I um, sometimes don't realize, like right at the beginning of a phrase, you won't realize who is saying it. You'll think you know who's saying (laughs) it and you do it in that voice totally and you're like, oh, sorry, that wasn't her. Just kidding. Just kidding. My, but but yeah. amazingly, my children follow along to my terrible reading aloud. So, yeah. I think I, I just have smart children. I think so. They're brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I totally agree with that because I can't pick up a book and not read it with emotion the first time. So that's like, I'm with them on that. I think it's I mean, like, I can read it with emotion in my head, but I can't, like, I don't have perform a... Perform it. No, I can't perform it. I, I do. Know. I can't. I can't do it, but anyway... So I guess he did a lot of like smaller plays and TV and film in Canada and stuff, and then he decided to move to New York. Well, I I read that he went and he wanted to be a drama teacher. Yes. He wasn't even planning on being yes. an actor. Just kind but of. But he was doing he was like doing acting on the side while he was studying. Right. To be a teacher, yeah. kind of a thing, and then he moved to New York City and got a part on a soap opera. Yeah. Like that's not where you would imagine I would imagine Nathan Fillion to go. He has that. He has. He could do that. Like. He can do the really smoldering thing, thing, but it's really smoldering. hard to see him like be serious. Because usually when he does the on smolder, one life to live, yes. Yeah, and usually when he does live. the smolder, it's like sarcastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like it's I don't think I've hammer. ever right. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen him do a serious smolder. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that I have either. And Maybe you should I don't look that know. up on YouTube. I know we should watch some clips of one life really to live. Joey Buchanan, I think, is who he played. So I don't. I'm not a big soap opera. Person. I watched Days of Our Lives for a very long time. You did. I don't anymore because the story, they, the story I just kept getting worse and worse. Like, yeah, I mean, even for me, and you know how my taste is, so it doesn't take much to keep me entertained. So yeah. But anyway, oh, yeah. Did you enjoy the uh, Korean thing I emailed to you? Oh my! I sent it to my parents. We actually looked at the reviews, and I don't think people actually made it through the whole entire movie. 
It was called Naked Christmas or Happy something. Naked Happy Christmas. Naked it's Christmas. It's like a Korean drama only in the form of a Christmas movie. It's a Christmas it's movie. It's on Netflix. Yeah, Christmas. Yeah, I sent and it to so my parents I, and my I dad's like, did you see the reviews on these? Because I'm like, Dad, it's purely for entertainment. Like, you don't have to watch it. It's really okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then, yeah. okay, so after, what, three years in as Joey Buchanan? He moves to L.A., mm -hmm. and he got bit parts in, like, Saving Private Ryan and stuff like that, and then he got he, a recurring part in Two Guys and a Girl. Oh, I didn't see that. I just saw that he got, when he met Joss Whedon, it was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That's yeah, he was. auditioned for that and mm -hmm. didn't get the, he auditioned for Angel. But he got I Caleb. I never watched the show. Yeah, I did, but it was a long time ago, so. Mm. Um, yeah, and then he didn't meet Joss Whedon until 2003 when he... Oh, I thought he meant it for... I don't even know. I know that Joss Whedon was the guy who did Buffy. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, it's morning. It is morning. It's, we're not doing so Good hot morning. this morning, right? <laughs> I needed another cup of coffee or something, but anyway. I didn't have any. Dang it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but then he, got the, then he got cast in Firefly. And see, this is where he be started becoming the nerd god that he is yes. today. But it's kind of cool, though, because he did like... Like adventure and fantasy and comic books and all that, because he he said that he would have like a classic but have a comic book in the middle. Because his mom always let him. I guess they would go to bed, but for thirty minutes they were allowed to read oh. before bed, and so he would. So he's like reading Moby Dick, but actually like reading the a comic Spider Man or something. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then you know, like he said. Also, I read a quote that he said that. Firefly was the most fun he ever mm -hmm. had. I love that because yeah. it's the most fun I've ever had. I know. Before. I was like, that's so cool to know that it was really fun to shoot. And then he did uh, Serenity mm -hmm. later. They did that. And then 2008, he did my favorite thing ever. Captain Hammer. Yes. I love Captain Hammer. Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. That's what it's actually called, right? Dr. Yes. In the, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. And his character was, was Captain Hammer, whom I dress up as at Comic-Cons. Yeah, and if you have not seen that, you really need to watch that because it's Neil Patrick Harris things. is in it also, and, and we Shade. like it. yeah, it, it, it's a cast of winners. It is, and it's just so, it's so funny yeah. and brilliant and well done and mm -hmm. well written, and the music is great, and I have the soundtrack, and a lot of times when although I the ending sucks, yeah, but and that's why I haven't rewatched really it much because I can't handle the end. Yeah, I was actually thinking about you because we finished Hell on Wheels. Her husband recommended Hell on Wheels to us, which is such a good show. I was watching a Korean drama. It's a Western, um, but it's really, really well done. It's really good. But uh, at the ending, I was like, oh, I'm really glad Christine did that. <laughs> I hate sad endings. Not good. Um, the other thing I read about him, well, he's currently doing Castle, and there's also which Castle I love. comic books. And there's books. So, you know. There's actual novels. That based are on that. based on Castle too. So I've you read can them. just get fully immersed in the Castle universe. Yeah, it's worth it. Um, and then the other thing that my favorite thing that I read about him was that he has been quoted as being one of Hollywood's nicest actors, which I was like, I believe that. Oh, that's really good. It that's makes me because you know I'm always afraid to meet people who I like to watch on because I love their characters or whatever yeah. like on their show, but I'm always afraid to meet them in real life because what if they're buttholes? I know. You right? know what I mean? Like, I don't, I want my pretty picture just to stay. I don't even want to meet well, anybody. Well, that's why it was really lovely to meet Felicia Day. Because she was, Cause she was so a lovely woman. Nice. She was a very lovely woman. Yeah, so. she was. Okay, so the second installment in this show, moving along, is J.J. Abrams. And he's the one that we said doesn't really count as a small beginning because both his parents were yes. TV execs. His mother, his and he father was, was a much, producer and his mother was an executive producer. His I sister mean, is a screenwriter. Yeah, and clearly he's brilliant. I mean, there's no questioning that. But it wasn't like he was some kid living out in the boondocks. It's not quite the same story as some of the other ones that we've told you about. Yeah, because I think he was born in New York and then they moved to L.A. So. And Yeah, and he's been... Um, I guess the the most important impressive thing to me that I did not know was that he also writes music. I did not know that either. I didn't know I that. that. And I was like, cool. oh my gosh. I mean, he's a brilliant writer and he's a brilliant producer, brilliant, you know, director, all of that. Some of my favorite shows and movies he's had a hand in. But I did not have any idea about the music. And when he was 16, he got his first real job and it was writing music for the film Night Beast. Who knows what nice Night Beast is? I have no idea. But dang, I you like to music his, for at film. sixteen though. I mean, that's kind of amazing. What, the? what I didn't know is that as a kid, he loved Star Wars. Like that was like he saw, it and that was like his thing. But he hated Star Trek. 
So when he made the Star Trek movies, he didn't like Star Trek. Yeah. He is now a Trekkie, though. He loves Star Trek, but he said it was too intellectual for him. <laughs> and too, like... It is Oh, I don't remember the other word he used, but it was too brainy or whatever for him. Yeah. And he didn't like it. And I'm like, that's so... Which it might be why I like the Star Trek movie, because he said he made it a movie for moviegoers, not just Trekkies. So if right. you've never seen Star Trek before, you can watch it. And, and like, still enjoy it. And still enjoy it, which I appreciate. Because but also I've there were enough nods to the original to, to keep the like, Trekkies oh. happy. Yeah. But still, though, I thought it was, you know, I thought that was kind of cool because I've never been a huge fan of Star Trek. Yeah. And I love the new movies. Well, yeah, I know you have, but I just <laughs> yeah. thought that was really interesting that it the guy who created Star Trek didn't even like it. Yeah, I know. I thought it was really interesting. The one thing I was impressed with with him is the amount of stuff he did at such a young age. Because, like, and I guess what I thought of is, like, I didn't, I, I, one of my best friends is an incredible songwriter. Her name's Michelle Patterson. You should look her up. She's amazing. Anyway, and she um, started writing songs when she was, like, you know, 13 or something. And her daughter's following in her footsteps now. It's pretty amazing. But I started writing songs when I was in my 30s. <laughs> and it is so awkward because, like, you know, when you start writing songs when you're 13, you get all the awkward, awful songs out of the way. Yeah. And then you can be, like, later you can be, like, yeah, I wrote that when I was 13. You know, that's, <laughs> nice that's why I'm so proud. Now I'm like, yeah, I wrote that three years ago. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm new to this. <laughs> so, so, I know, but you know, I mean, it's just like, it's one of those things that's kind of funny. Like, it's it's a beautiful thing when you can figure out what you love and start it when you're really young. If nothing else, for no other reason than to get the awkward years done while you're young. Totally. It's way harder to be awkward when you're older. It's just not Because as cool. you can look back and forgive yourself and be like, okay, you were young I was and a dumb. Kid. Yeah, so you're, Instead you're of, I all was right. 33, and I yes. can't believe I performed that in front of people. Oh, so embarrassing. Anyway, you know, I mean, I think that's really cool, though, because he obviously had, like, a bent that he was going towards, although it was music and film. But he's still, I mean, and, and this is, it's not to say that he's not talented, because he is. He just, oh you know, gosh, may have had hugely. a little bit, you know, he, yeah, he just kind of like we talked about help. before, though, mm -hmm. when you have creative parents and somebody who's doing, you know. And he grew up in the business, really, because his yeah. parents are both in it, so he kind of had a little leg up over a few people. Yeah, and he, so the other thing that was interesting to me is when he was a senior, he co wrote a treatment that ended up being Taking, taking Care, care of business. business. So I was Which like, Which that's kind of cool because that's a big in high school. movie. Senior in high no, school. I thought it was a senior in college. Was it a senior, a senior in, college? in college. Oh, okay. Still, <laughs> 16, 16, so he goes from like being a 16 year old and writing the film score and then writing a film. Like, that's just, I don't. That's pretty, I mean, even for a college senior though, that's pretty good because when I was a senior in college, I was not writing films. I'll tell you that much. No, and then he went on to write a ton of films and, and um, he wrote Regarding Henry and Forever Young and. Like, which I actually really like both of those films. But they're not the typical, what you think of now as J.J. Abrams is like. The only one, the, the movie I always think of is that one, it, was it The Village? Is that what it's called? I don't know, that was an M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, movie. just kidding. <laughs> 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 I thought that was... No. And so anyways, I clearly know nothing about anything, so. No, but Regarding Henry and Forever Young are both like really, um... They have a lot of heart to them, but they're not about, you know, like, I think now that we t think about J.J. Abrams, we think about, like, the geek guy that he is, where he's, like, Star, Star Trek, Trek and, all that. and Lost and Star Wars coming up. and Star Wars and all these things, but these movies are just, like, more, you know, I mean, like, Forever Young's about a guy, I don't know if you've seen it, it's no. Mel Gibson, it's about a guy who's cryogenically frozen, and, like, during, I think it's, like, the 30s, and he wakes up, like, now. Elijah Wood's in it too, a little bitty. I've never thing. seen it. I liked it, but it's it's weird and quirky, and but it's really like sentimental and sweet too. Um, so anyway, it's just interesting to see that he was this. It was the same guy in the both of those. Yeah, and then he went on to do was kind of that was a shocker to me because I'm like, really? That's like a girl show. Yeah, I've never I don't seen know. It. Uh, well, I never really cared about it, but name, though. in college, like all my friends would get together on whatever night it Wednesday night. I don't even know. And they would watch Felicity because that was the thing. And I'm like, I don't really care about the show. I just want to hang out with them. So I inadvertently watched it. Right on. Yeah. yeah no, I've never seen I, the episode. I yeah. think the girl who's in it is really cute. She's totally cute. And Felicity's my mother-in-law's name. So it's all good things. Um, but then he did, um, well, he's alias guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which I've never seen, and every time I say that, I get really chastised because apparently I would really love it. I've never seen it either. So I really need to watch it because... Everybody, all my really good friends who know me really well, 
Every time I say something about not having seen Alias, they're like, oh, you've got to watch it. You would love it so much. So that's what I, I have that on my list. One of those things to do. Um, and then Lost, which he, what I read of that mm. one is he really only had like creatively in like the pilot episode and he had like little bits to do with it. Like he wasn't like a main creator of Lost. Yeah. You know, but still a good show. You know what, I understood him a lot more though, I think I've mentioned this before, but he does a TED Talk, which if you don't know what TED Talks are, you should look them up. Oh my word, you should look them up, because they're so good and educational and amazing and mind-blowing. Um, but it's like uh, technology entertainment design, is that what TED stands for? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, and they do these seminars and they have all these amazing people from like every walk of life come and talk about different things. And so J.J. Abrams came and he talked about... What he talked about was the mystery box where he went to a magic shop with his granddad and he was like eight or nine and his dad his granddad said, You can pick anything you want in the store and it was a it was a magic shop, I think. Yeah, is that what I said? Anyway. And so he got this box. It's just a cardboard box, it's like this big and has a big orange question mark and it's the mystery box. And so you don't know what's in it. Right. He still has not opened it. And he talks about the value of mystery and how what makes this thing, you know, more valuable is the fact that you don't know and you, you can, you can pretend, you can, you know, you can imagine what's in it, you can guess, you can, you know, and I was like, Ugh, that's some I wouldn't serious have made it out of the store. No. Like, I because was, right now I'm feeling a little anxious that he doesn't know and I want to know. I know. If I lived with him, I would probably open it and reseal it because I would be like, I need to know what's like, in it. Like, I this. couldn't be married to that man. <laughs> no. That would be like the rig red button. <laughs> You know what seriously, I mean? Seriously. Like, oh my god, please just open it. Just let me Put open me it out for of my you. misery. I'll open it for you. Can it's we like get an ice cream machine? The, it's like finding out the gender of your baby. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't need the... Just tell me what it is. I did... See, I didn't do that, though. I did Only it with, with one kid. The last kid. I found out with the two. Didn't find out with the first one. Yeah. Oh, and it killed me. Yeah, I... That, yeah. I anyway. I knew, <laughs> but I was wrong. Um, so, yeah, I think that... I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a genius guy. And I think that when I watched that TED Talk, though, it kind of made me go, oh, I understand him a lot more now. Because, like, Lost, for instance, is a prime example. Like, even if he didn't, he had an, he had a part in creating There's it. There's definitely a mystery box in there. <laughs> and he didn't care about telling you what was in the mystery box, you know? Which drove his me concern. Nuts. His concern is creating the mystery, not telling you what's in it. So I was like, okay, now I understand more about you. So, Yeah. Anyway, anything else interesting about JJ? No, I think, think we've got it. Yeah. So he did anyway. not write the village. <laughs> I, do <know> that. <laughs> I don't know if he wrote it. M Night Shyamalan directed it. I'm thinking he probably didn't. I M Night is that's the guy I was thinking of. Yeah. It all JJ. We should have M done a show about him though, because I love his stuff. Although he's very controversial. People love him or hate him. Mm -hmm. I I do like him a lot. Most people like Sixth Sense though. That I was like kind that of his one. mainstream one. I like yeah. that. The, I hated the village. I hated it. Was it scary, or you just didn't like it? Oh, uh, both. Yeah. Mm hmm. I liked it. I like. It. I think I've liked all of his movies except I haven't seen Avatar: The Last Airbender because I love the cartoon so much I couldn't bring myself to watch it. So. Anyway. And I'm <laughs> on topic. Anyway, okay. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us, and join us next week. And we have some a fun surprise for you. So we'll see you next week.